Hello, I'm back and it's number five for our video communications. I hope all of you are well. Sherilyn, Bella and I are all well and we've been staying at home as much as possible. We've been practicing our social distancing when we've been going out and we have some cloth masks that we bought here locally that we're wearing more and more. We've also been trying to stay active. We've been going out on walks when the weather is nice. So hopefully you've been able to get out and be active also. It's been good talking to many of you on the telephone over the past few weeks, and I'm gonna to continue to connect with each, other, each of you over the phone and texting as much as I can. I've also asked the Ministry Leadership Council, the MLC, its members to connect with each of you on a, on a regular basis. Some of them have already been doing that, but more of them are gonna be doing it now also. It's important that we stay connected as much as we can. We need to connect with our family and our friends and our church family and our neighbors. We need to isolate physically, but we should not be isolating relationally. So please take time to connect with family and friends, church family, neighbors, check on them, see how they're doing, see if you can help them in any way. Looking ahead to May, it seems that it's possible that some of these restrictions might be lifted starting the first part of next month. The federal government has issued guidelines for a three-phase process but we also have to consider the state government and our local government and what they may recommend or tell us that we should be doing. Now, if we follow the federal government's guidelines, their plan, we could possibly start meeting back together here in the sanctuary for our weekly worship services during phase two, which I would assume comes in about mid-May. When we do start to worship together again here in the sanctuary, we will still need to practice social distancing and other safety procedures. I know many of us, many of you, as I am, are looking forward to meeting together again here in the sanctuary for our worship services each week. Now, every year we have our annual concert and hog roast in May. And this year it was scheduled for Sunday, May 17th. Because of the uncertainty of the pandemic and the stay at home orders, we as a leadership have decided to cancel the concert and hog roast for this year. This year we had scheduled Jerry Garcia for the concert. Jerry's been with us several times over the years. He's came several times for the hog roast in May and several times for our holiday dinner in December. Most of us think of Jerry as family. And I've not talked to Jerry since the pandemic hit the United States, but I'm sure he's not traveling and ministering. His mus music ministry is a large part of his income, and I'm sure he and his family are feeling the effects of this pandemic. The leadership and I, we would like to take up a love offering for Jerry and his family. I, I know some of you might be experiencing some financial difficulties of your own at the time, at this time, but for those of you who can give, please pray about what God would have you give to Jerry and his ministry, and then please send it to the church. When you do, mark it for Jerry Garcia for his love offering. Now you don't have to send it immediately. You can send it with your next tithe check. We'll be taking up this offering until Friday, May the 8th. And then on Monday the 11th, Dorothy, our treasurer, will cut a check and send it to Jerry. Speaking of tithes, Dorothy has shared that many of you are sending in your tithes each week. And I appreciate that. I'm thankful for that. I know sometimes if we're not here physically each week, it's human nature that we forget to send in our tithes. So if you haven't been sending in your tithes, and you can, I would encourage you to go ahead and do so. Right now, we as a church body are holding our own financially, but we don't know how much longer this is going to last. We don't know how much longer we're not going to be able to meet together in the sanctuary for our weekly worship. So we're, we are concerned about our finances. We're careful with them, and we want to make sure that everything is going to get paid. So if you can, please send in your tithe. We appreciate it. And again, for those of you who are doing that, thank you very much for doing that. Now, I know there's a lot of bad news out there right now, and there has been a lot of bad news out there for several weeks. But I know God is working in and through this crisis. So I encourage you to seek God and what he has for you during this time. What is it that he wants you to learn? Or where does he want you to grow in your life during this time? It could be as simple as growing in your faith as you trust him during this crisis. But there might be areas in your life that God is really wanting you to address during this time. And before all of this happened, you were so busy that you could ignore 
these things coming to your mind when God would bring them. You're so busy, you put all these things in your life that you could just push that aside because you had things to do. But now, if you're not that busy and God is bringing these areas to your life, to your mind, please pay attention. And some of these areas could include fear, anxiety, unforgiveness, shame, guilt, unresolved grief, bitterness, lack of gratitude, even pride or peace, mercy, grace, compassion, etc. The list could go on. But when God brings these to your mind, pay attention to them. He's bringing them to your mind for a reason. And now may be the opportune time for you to start addressing these things that he's bringing to your mind. Maybe God is just wanting you to focus on your relationships with your children or your spouse or your siblings or your parents. And I've heard from other pastors that many of the parents in their congregations are more busy now than they were before. They're both working at home all the while trying to help their children with their schoolwork. And this is bringing added pressure and stress and anxiety to their lives. Parents, I wanna encourage you during these times to turn to the Lord and his word. Take time for prayer and reading God's word. You don't have to spend a lot of time, just a few moments every morning in God's word and in prayer could change the direction of your entire day. So I'd encourage you to be doing that. Also, take time each day to look for blessings and take time to share with your family and have them share with about blessings that they've seen and experienced through the day. This can also help with the stress and anxiety in our lives because God is working and there are blessings happening all around us every day, even in the midst of this crisis. We just have to be aware of them and acknowledge them and share them. I want to leave you with a verse from Matthew. It's Matthew 11. It's actually a passage, three verses, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. This is what we read here. Jesus is speaking and he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is willing to take our trouble and our burdens. If we're weary and burdened, he's willing to carry that for us, but we have to be willing to give it to him. And once we give it to him, we have to be careful not to take it back from him and start carrying it again. Jesus will carry our burdens. If we're, you are weary and burdened, turn to Jesus and give it to him and he will carry it for you. He says it in his word and his promise is true. That's all I have for you this week. Say goodbye, take care, and God bless.